good morning everyone and welcome to adda 24/7 my name is rohit and in this session we are going to start with the current affairs show uh, specifically for the bankers uh, regulatory bodies and specialist officers exam so we are going to focus from that point of view so this uh, session will be conducted in the purely english uh, medium so basically this session uh, will be continuing from monday to saturday at 7 am uh, on daily basis i am here uh, with a few of the great good questions which are most expected in the exams uh, plus we are going to see the concepts which are in news which are relevant for your current affairs point of view plus from that current affairs i am going to deal with your banking and financial awareness static part which will be very uh, very much useful for you so this kind of stuff we are going to study over here okay good morning vivek so basically uh, before starting this uh, session let's see a uh, today's uh, morning booster we can say it's a code quote success is where preparation and opportunity meet as we all know we are getting lots of opportunities from different uh, government sectors we can see the many many of the notifications are coming but where is our preparation ठीक है और वी ऑलवेज थिंक दैट लक काम करेगा तो ठीक है लक इज दी अनदर फैक्टर बट प्रिपरेशन इज द मोस्ट बेसिक कोर विच यू हैव टू फॉलो ओवर इयर सो प्रिपरेशन एंड अपॉर्चुनिटी वेर दे मीट दैट टाइम ओनली वी कैन से दैट द सक्सेस हैज बीन अचीव्ड इफ यू आर प्रिपेरिंग बट द अपॉर्चुनिटी इज नॉट देर देन यू हैव टू क्रिएट द अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर दैट ओके so stay preparing whichever exam you are doing be constant on the channel you will see lots of new things over here through mcqs through static gk i'm going to cover it your banking and financial part i'm going to cover it in this one session itself then the current affairs point of part i'm going to cover it all the major appointments from january obituaries all the important days from january i am going to cover each and everything in this session itself and we are going to provide you with the pdf for the same so that you don't have to refer any kinds of other notes or material which are available in the market okay so just be regular over here everything will be fine everything each and every syllabus pointers will be covered in this session itself okay so basically let's uh, start with our days first of all i am going to cover your days in the month of june if we see this if we see this on 1st of june we celebrated world milk day okay on 1st of june what we celebrated world milk day but if i talk about national milk day if i talk about national milk day it was it is celebrated on 26th november okay world milk day was celebrated on 1st june but the national milk day is celebrated on 26th november this is the difference which you have to see over here boys okay now if i talk about world milk day it started from 2001 sometimes the examiner may ask you the question that when was the first world milk day celebrated so it was 2001 and if we talk about national milk day it was first celebrated in 
ओके देर इज अ वन मोर क्वेश्चन गाइज इफ यू कैन टेल मी वॉट इज दी अनदर थिंग विच वी सेलिब्रेट ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ नवंबर वॉट इज दी अनदर थिंग विच वी सेलिब्रेट ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ नवंबर येस अनदर डे सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ नवंबर डू यू नो दी रेलिवेंस ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स नवंबर ओवर इयर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इंडिया येस कम ऑन एनी वन so basically 26th november is celebrated as constitution day constitution 26th november is celebrated as constitution day because the constitution was adopted on 26th of november 1949 okay and uh, one more thing to remember over here uh, 1st june was also celebrated as global parents day which was started from 2012 okay and the theme was drawing attention to the climate crisis and how the uh, dairy industry can lessen its environmental impact so basically this was the on 1st june on 2nd june there is a telangana formation day <coughs> 2nd june <coughs> telangana state was formed so it is known as telangana formation day Uh, can you tell me that in on in which year telangana state was formed can you tell me yes priyanka yes telangana state was formed in which year telangana state was formed in which year yes anyone yes can we say it as the uh, youngest state of india telangana come on wake up good morning can we say telangana as the youngest state yes or no and in which year it was started established yes vivek somen dhiru come on okay third june we celebrated as world bicycle day third june we celebrated as world bicycle day and it was started from 2018 fourth june was uh, celebrated as international day for innocent children victim of aggression it was started from 2011 this starting date this first date we should know okay and the 5th june was celebrated as world environment day it is also known as people's day 5th june was celebrated as world environment day no not 1989 no priyanka it was 2014 telangana was formed in 2014 ओके okay, प्रियंका सो वर्ल्ड एनवायरमेंट डे वॉज सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन फिफ्थ ऑफ जून इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज वॉट पीपल्स डे बिकॉज इट इज द मॉरल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द पीपल टू प्रोटेक्ट द एनवायरमेंट एंड द अर्थ ओके एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ओवर यर यू शुड रिमेंबर दिस थीम दैट दी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन थीम वॉज ओनली वन अर्थ ओके ओनली one earth this theme is very much important from your exam perspective this question might arrive that they might ask you that what was the theme of 2022 world environment day okay so can anyone tell me that when we started celebrating this world environment day yes we started in since 1974 we started since 19 74 okay so this was the days up till now in the upcoming session i am going to revise all this date plus update the dates which are in news yes okay 
so stay tuned with this i am going to update this charge each and every day and i am going to revise because see guys only reading will not clear your exam with reading you have to revise with reading you have to revise the much the much more you revise the much more you are closer to your success okay so moving further uh this scheme this program was in use that is prime minister's employment generation program this program was uh, basically started in 2008 this program was started in uh, 2008 prime minister's employment generation program there are three things from exam point of view which you have to remember okay one is the starting date it was started from 2008 9 then <coughs> it was in news because a 15th finance commission 15th finance commission uh, can you tell me the chairman of 15th finance commission it was nk singh remember chairman of 15 finance commission was nk singh according to this commission this program prime minister's employment generation program has been extended from 2021 to 2026 for another 5 years okay it has been extended for another 5 years pdf you will get pdf why to don't make your life hectic you will get each and everything in pdf just listen or you can just take a screenshot of important points if you want so that you can read while traveling other than that there is no need for making notes i will assure you that whatever we do over here it gets by heart itself and i am only focusing on the crunch okay <clears throat> so there is no waste material over here and plus i am giving you some gk knowledge as well so that you you may not need to read anything else from that current affairs <clears throat> okay so it has been extended sometimes they also ask you about the outlay budget so it was 13554.42 crs which was allocated okay with respect to prime minister's uh, employment generation program then this program works for this program works for micro sector it generates employment in which sector micro sector that is also non farm non farm micro sector okay and the project ceiling price has also increased if you want to start a project in manufacturing sector the maximum project cost is raised to 50 lakhs if you want to start any kind of project under this scheme okay that is a manufacturing project manufacturing project you want to start then the upper ceiling has been 50 lakhs okay and for the uh, <coughs> service sector it has been increased to 20 lakhs okay and for the service sector it has been increased to 20 lakhs so this question may uh, may arrive that the increase what is the increased value for manufacturing sector or what is the increased value for the uh, what we can say service sector okay sometimes you make notes but sometime you miss to do it yes it may happen okay that's why we are providing with you the pdf so the writing part gets avoided and you focus on reading and revision okay and the day when you miss any session you can watch it live or youtube recorded lectures and apart from that you can read the pdf 
ओके सो द लिंक डजन गेट ब्रेक Getting my point, Priyanka. So don't focus on making notes. If you are getting spoon-feeded everything, then why you are making your life a hell? Okay. So this was the program. <coughs> then let's see. There is a question now. Which institution? Recently unveiled Param Ananta supercomputer. Which institution recently unveiled Param Ananta supercomputer? So the options are IIT Bombay, uh, MET means Mumbai Education Trust, IIT uh, Gandhinagar, IIT Madras, and IIT Guwahati. Yes, any comment? Yes, any comments? Can you guess the answer? C. Okay, C. Okay. Yes, the answer is C. IIT Gandhinagar. Okay. <coughs> now here you have to remember two things. Okay, from exam uh, perspective, you have to remember two things uh, one is that cdac center for development of advanced computing okay cdac cdac plus iit gandhinagar this two institution <coughs> collaboratively built this supercomputer called Paramananta. Okay. These two institution combinedly built, jointly built. Okay. Ex in exam, there might be a twisted question, which was the another institution which was helping? It was CDAC. Okay. It was CDAC plus IIT Gandhinagar. Now, this supercomputer was uh, prepared or launched under National Supercomputing Mission. Can anyone tell me how many supercomputers do we have? Can anyone tell me how many supercomputers do we have? We have total 15 supercomputers which has been given dedicated to the nation. We have total 15 supercomputers which we have dedicated to the public. The computer, this supercomputer is uh, able to perform of 838 8 teraflops operations. Okay. <coughs> and with a combined performance capability of 24 petaflops. So, here we have three things to remember. One is that this point, CDAC and IIT Gandhinagar, which was uh, involved in preparing the uh, supercomputer. Second thing is what? National supercomputing mission under national uh, com computing mission. Third thing, yes, third thing what? India has given how many uh, supercomputers? 15 supercomputers to the public, to the nation. Okay. Then let's. Which of the following institution released the report titled Tobacco? Poisoning our planet. See, such kind of reports are always been asked in exams. So, you should remember that. Okay. Such kind of questions like this reports or the institution about the institution are always asked in the exams. So, see, let's see what are the options. Our options is Niti Ayog. World Health Organization, UNICEF, Ministry of Health and Family Affair, and United Nations General Assembly. So, what is the answer? Yes, which institution released the report titled Tobacco Poisoning Our Planet? Yes. 
What is the answer? This report has been released by World Health Organization. Okay, this report has been released by World Health Organization. So basically, WHO released the report titled Tobacco Poisoning Our Planet and it also surveyed that how much loss it causes to the human mankind. For example, according to WHO, 8 million human lives because of tobacco, tobacco, how many lives do suffer? 8 million lives do suffer. With how many trees are cutting? 600 million trees are cutting. Land occupied was 2 lakh hectares of land. With 22 billion of water used. And about CO2, if we talk about CO2, it releases 84 million tons of CO2. Okay. So, this is the, we can call as a global warming. So, tobacco is playing a very major role. And in terms of economy, as well as environment, as well as earth. We, we lose our dear ones because of this kind of stuff. Uh, now, you should, uh, you should also remember, you should also remember the other reports which are published by, the other reports which are published by WHO. World Health Organization, World Health Report, Global Nutrition Report, World Vision Report, Ambient Air Pollution Report and World Report on Hearing. So, these are the <coughs> other reports which are released by WHO. So, question might arrive that which of the following report is released, yeah, which of the following report is not released by WHO. Okay, so these are the other six reports which are released by whom? WHO. What is that? World Health Report, Global Nutrition Report, then World Vision Report, Ambient Air Pollution Report, World Report on Hearing. Okay, then got it. Uh, then moving further. Blue Dart Express, you know, you might be knowing the logistic uh, Blue Dart Express, okay. This Blue Dart Express, which is a part of a Duche Post DHL group, basically they signed a Climate Neutral Now pledge. Climate Neutral Now pledge of United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Now, basically this is the self-declarative pillage where they are going to mitigate greenhouse gases. Okay. Now, here we have three things to remember. <coughs> One is a package of 7 billion euros. How much they are going to spend? A package of 7 billion euros. They are going to spend a package of 7 billion euros. Now, there are two things which you have to remember. One is short term goal and one is long term goal. Okay. Short term goal, they are going to reduce by 2030. But the long term goal is they are going to reduce the emission by 2050 and that is net zero. Okay. Under short term goals, they are going to mitigate, they are going to reduce greenhouse gases by 2030. And the long term goal is they are going to get, achieve net zero GHG, greenhouse gases by 2050. Okay. Then, there was another thing in news that the government of India has decided to increase coal gasification to 100 million tons by 2030. This kind of targets which are set by the government are always asked in the exam. That's why it is very much coal gasification is a clear, cleaner 
energy of uh, coal we can say so that's why we are going to manufacture with 100 million tons by 2030 okay so this year is again important uh, then we have a government has set up an interministerial panel see basically the online gaming whatever we are playing today they are not regulated okay they are not regulated so to bring this uh, online gaming under some kind of ministry they have set up a panel uh, which are having seven members this question might be asked seven members including ceo of niti ayog including the ceo of niti ayog can you tell me that who is the ceo of niti ayog yeah can you tell me the full form that what does uh, niti ayog stands for yes Yes. Can you tell me? Yes, can you tell me what does Niti Ayog stands for? Niti Ayog basically stands for National Institution for transforming India. Okay, Niti Ayog stands for National Institution for Transforming India. Okay, Niti Ayog stands for National Institution for Transforming India. Then next, okay, Rajesh Ghera took over as the DG, Director General of National Informatics Center. This was the new appointment has made that Rajesh Ghera, he took over as the charge of DG, okay, Director General of National Informatics Center. This kind of questions are always in exams that appointment section are there, uh, is there, uh, uh, which is asked in the exam. So, you should remember this. Along with this, I have also, I have also, uh, made some list of some important appointments which were in news recently okay uh, like uh, justice uh, mohanti that he took the additional charge of lokpal then anwar hussein he is the new chair of wto committee then chief pinai kumar saxena he is the new uh, delhi's lg then sangeeta singh he is the chairman of CBT. Then Vyankar Trami Sumantran. He is the chairman of board of director of Interglobe Aviation. Then we have Arvind Krishna, board of Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Okay. Then Nan Mulchandani. He is the first ever chief tech officer of CIA. Then we have Rajiv Kumar. He is the uh, election commissioner, next chief election commissioner. So, these are some important, uh, we can say, appointments of the month of uh, May. Okay. So, you have to remember this. So, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 plus 1, 9. 9 appointments. Okay. We have seen these 9 appointments. So, Justice Mohanty, he was, he was, he took the additional charge of Lokpal. Anwar Hussain, he is the new chair of WTO committee. Chief Vinay Kumar Saxena, he is the new LG of Delhi. Then Sangeeta Singh, he is the chair, she is the chairman of uh, CB, uh, CBT. Then uh, Vyankat, Vyankat Ramani, he is the chairman of board of directors of Interglobe Aviation. Then we have Arvind Krishna, he is the board of Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Then uh, Nand Mulchandani, he is the first ever chief tech officer of CIA. Then Rajiv Kumar, he is the next chief election commissioner okay so remember this uh, some appointments which are very useful for your exam then next rbi has released its one of its report where it was telling the uh, on advances slippages means non payment slippages means non payment on advances the money which you lend to someone 
what do you mean by slippages? Slippages means payment has not been done or it has not been paid on time. And advances means with what? Advance means the payment which we give for the specific purpose for a specific period, short period, long period, whatever is the uh, scenario. So this is the scenario. So what, what they said uh, in this report? In this report, they said that the balance sheet has been increased by 4,82 crore. That is 8 percent. Okay, previously it was 51,000 crore balance, but now it has been raised to 61,000 crore. So, it is a very alarming point where non-performing asset is increasing. Okay, now if we talk about the non-performing assets, if you are talking about non-performing assets, then uh, I would like to show the chart. Okay, so these are the loans and advances given by the banks. Now, basically, this is the asset for the company when the banks, commercial banks, when they provide loan. So, there are two types of assets. One is standard assets and one is non-performing assets, NPA. Standard assets are of two types. One is regular. Regular means the due or the loan you are paying on time okay and there is a stressed asset stressed means there is a some kind of delay delay from one day to 90 days then the asset is stressed stressed assets are of three types sma0 sma1 and sma2 Special mention account. SMA means what? Special mention account. What do you mean by special mention account? Uh, these are those accounts which are likely to be the non-performing asset. In the coming future, they are likely to be the non-performing asset. Then SMA 0 comes where, where there is a delay of 1 to 30 days. SMA 1 comes where there is a delay of 31 to 60 days. Then SMA2 comes where there is a delay of 61 to 90 days. Means it is just all about the delays. How much delay your payment is, that type of category is your account. If your delay for 10 days, payment is delayed for 10 days, then your, your account will come under SMA0. <coughs> if it is more than 30 days, below 60 days, it will come under 1. And if it is more than 60 and below 90, then it will be, it will come under 2. Okay. And whenever it is beyond 90 days, then it will come under non-performing assets. Okay. When there is a delay in payment for more than what? 90 days. For more than 90 days, then it will come under non-performing assets. Now, whenever there is a, a non-performing asset, Non-performing assets are of three types. We have substandard assets where the NPA is up to 12 months. When there is a delay in payment up to 12 months, it will come under substandard assets. If it is greater than 12 months, then it is called doubtful assets. And after certain uh, certain point of view, when we think that it is non-recoverable, the amount paid, the loan given is non-recoverable, then we called it as a loss asset. Then what we called it as a loss asset. So, hope you understood this. Okay. Then uh, let's see further. Okay, Punjab government was in news uh, because they are set to release e-stamp. They are set to release electronic stamp instead of paper stamp. So, whatever the corruption with respect to the paper stamp is there, it will get mitigated or we can say reduced. Okay. Now, basically the government is going to pay the commission of 2%. Okay. To stamp vendors, Punjab government is going to pay the commission of 2% to stamp vendors that is ranging from 
रुपीज वन टू नाइनटीन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड नाइनटी नाइन एंड दनरल पब्लिक स्टैम्प एट द एक्चुअल प्राइस फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द एक्चुअल प्राइस इज इफ द एक्चुअल प्राइस इज ऑफ हंड्रेड देन द पब्लिक द जनरल पब्लिक विल पे ओनली हंड्रेड रुपीज नो अ पेनी अबाउ दैट ओके नॉट अ सिंगल पेनी about that so basically this is the uh, very good initiative uh, where corruption can be mitigated so remember one thing that the e stamp has been released by which government yes punjab government and punjab government is going to pay how much commission yes it is going to pay 2% commission that is from 1 to 19999 and the general public how much commission they are going to pay to the vendor none the cost of this stamp is the actual price the individual is going to pay to the stamp vendor because here the commission it will be given by the punjab government okay then next the first liquid mirror telescope yes can you tell me the first liquid mirror telescope in the country and it is the largest in asia it is the largest in asia yes anyone can tell so basically it has been established uh, yeah launched it has been set up as uh, devasthal observatory campus always remember this first liquid mirror telescope has been established at uh, devasthal observatory campus which is owned by aryabhatta research institute of observational science aries which is located where it is located in nainital in uttarakhand and has set up international liquid mirror telescope this liquid which you see over here it is made up of mercury question may arise that the liquid liquid is used in that so it has been it has been used as a, as a mercury so mercury was used for that purpose then uh, what was the purpose to set up this uh, it will observe all the celestial objects space debris asteroids supernova okay it will absorb each and every single thing from single place and it has been placed at an altitude of 2450 okay it has been placed at then altitude of 2450 okay okay then let's see the next question who has been appointed as the new chief operating officer of the meta okay anyone yes who has been appointed as the new chief operating officer of meta yes anyone Yes, is it Major Manoj Soni, Jaslin Kohli, Abdullah Kutti, uh, Javier Oberin, Babita Singh? So the answer is D. That is Javier Oliven. Okay, Javier Oberin. He has been appointed as the Chief Operating Officer of Meta Platform, formerly known as Facebook. he he uh, he has oliven has grown in pyrenees mountains of northern spain okay he is from basically northern spain in exam they may ask you that from which country did he belong you are born but currently he lives in california at palo alto but currently where is he staying in california okay then uh, let's see about some important important appointments like uh, manoj soni was appointed as chairman of upsc manoj soni was appointed as chairman of upsc then jaslin kohli uh, he has been appointed as ceo of digital insurance then abdullah abdullah kutti he has been chairman of the hajj committee of india he has been appointed as the chairman of hajj committee of india then babita singh 
शी इज दी न्यू ग्लोबल पीस एम्बेसिडर फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दिस इज वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट यू शुड रिमेंबर दैट देन विक्रम देव दत्त इट इज अज अ चेयरमैन एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ एयर इंडिया एसेट होल्डिंग देन वी हैव बिमल कोटारी ही वॉज अपॉइंटेड एज अ न्यू चेयरमैन ऑफ इंडिया पल्स एंड ग्रेन्स एसोसिएशन देन वी हैव अमीर खान ही वॉज अपॉइंटेड एज अ ब्रांड एम्बेसिडर ऑफ फार्मा इजी ओके सो दीज आर द वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट अदर इम्पॉर्टेंट अपॉइंटमेंट विच यू शुड रिमेंबर प्रीवियसली वी डेल्थ विद नाइन नाउ दिस इज टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्थ थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सेवेंटीन सेवेंटीन अपॉइंटमेंट्स हैव बीन कवर्ड टिल यट इन दिस सेशन सो दीज आर द काइंड ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट स्टफ now i will in the coming session i will also bring up the important appointments from the month of january uh, february so that it can get revised okay because revision is very much important over here <coughs> okay so let's look further okay pradhan mantri jan aushadi kendra okay this was in news uh, because the pharmaceutical and medical device bureau of india which is the implementing agency okay which is the implementing agency of pradhan mantri bhartiya jan aushadi pariyojana okay bhartiya jan aushadi pariyojana they have made a record sale in the month of may they have sold around medicines of 100 crores this is the highest from its launch okay uh, this yojana pradhan mantri bhartiya jan aushadi pari yojana was launched in 2008 from that year itself in may it has a record breaking sell of 100 cr which is the highest up till now If we talk about the previous month, it was around eighty-three crores, but in May it was hundred. It crossed hundred CR. Under this uh, pariyojana, uh, the tablets, the medicines are given are a very lesser cost, a very low price. It has been very successful for a middle class or a lower middle class people to purchase medicine at a very cheaper price. Okay, then. <clears throat> the government has also set a target i have al always told you that the government's target is very much important in our exam so you should remember that what target is set by the governor sorry government so basically a uh, government has decided uh, to establish 10000 kendras jan jan aushadi kendras 10000 by 2024 how many kendras 10000 they have set a target that they will establish 10000 kendras by 2024 and as per may 2022 we have 8735 kendras okay as per now we have how many 8735 kendras <coughs> okay clear clear everyone then next okay in which state did the president ramnath kovind inaugurated sant kabir academy and research center okay in which state ramnath kovind the president of india inaugurated sant kabir academy and research center so the options are maharashtra uttar pradesh madhya pradesh bihar or sikkim so the answer is uttar pradesh okay in the state of uttar pradesh the president of india has inaugurated sant kabir academy research center okay it is uttar pradesh and along with him who attended the function it was governor anandi ben patel and the chief minister himself from the state okay then next global initiative lifestyle for the environment life life movement 
This movement was virtually launched by PM yesterday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, on the occasion of World Environment Day. Okay, this initiative, this idea of life was introduced by whom? PM in the 26th meeting of COP, COP26, Glasgow, last year. Okay, this idea was, idea when it arrived in 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference. Okay, but it was uh, virtually launched when yesterday, 5th of June, which it, it was World Environment Day. Okay, then what is the uh, purpose, what is the idea that it is the, the environment, the nature should be used mindfully and deliberate utilization instead of, instead of what? Mindless and destructive consumption. So, it is a moral moral sense that we should, each and every resources which is present in the environment should be used deliberately, properly, in an effective and efficient manner rather than destructive manner. So, the coming generation will get to know about the resources which are, which are available today. Then the program was a, a huge uh, program which was attended by the very big personality like co-chairman of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill Gates was there. Then Chief Economist Lord Nicholas Stern, author of Nudge Theory, Professor Kaas Sustain, CEO and President of World Resources Institute, Aniruddha Das Gupta was there. Many huge personality attended this, attended this program virtually. Okay, remember this. Then next, recently Health Minister <coughs> Mansuk uh, Mandiviya inaugurates FSSI's National Food Laboratory in which state? So basically it was established in Bihar. The state was established in, uh, the National Food Laboratory was, sorry, was established in uh, Bihar. Actually the food, uh, Bihar, Nepal exports some kind of food material to uh, India via Bihar. So it uh, tests the quality. So earlier it was tested uh, from Kolkata. Now it has been uh, national food uh, laboratory has been established in Bihar itself. So the testing would be much faster as compared to <coughs> as compared to what when it was established in Kolkata. The samples was sent in Kolkata. Okay, the laboratory has been established under which India Nepal bilateral agreement. Okay. So, this laboratory has been established under which agreement? India-Nepal bilateral agreement where the uh, food samples are imported okay, from Nepal. Then next, earlier the imported samples, what I said earlier the imported samples having legal sanctity were being sent to National Food Laboratory in, at Kolkata. So, it was a time consuming that from Nepal, you were sending the food for testing for Kolkata. Now, when we have established the National Food Laboratory in Bihar itself, so the testing of food will be much faster. Okay, the testing of food will be much faster over here. Then next, <coughs> UN approves Turkey's re request to change its name to Turkey. So basically there was uh, two uh, reasons to change its name, uh, change the spelling name as well. Uh, because there was the <coughs> animal food uh, in uh, North America you can see on the, on the big occasion on their festivals like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, there is a meat called turkey animal called turkey which is served uh, on the special occasions over there that was disrespectful for the government they, it was telling and then the Cambridge dig, uh, dictionary definition they define turkey as a something that fails badly or stupid or silly person so basically these were the reasons uh, basic reason where they were willing to change the name or what this this is the only country to change its name or earlier it has happened. Yes, earlier it has happened. There are different countries as well there which have changed their names uh, like Holland. Uh, this is the old name. Holland was the old name. The new, new name is the Netherlands. Uh, Macedonia that is known as uh, North Macedonia currently. Then Persia that is known as Iran. 
Asiam, uh, that is known as Thailand, and Rhodesia, that is today known as uh, Zimbabwe. So there are other countries as well where the names has been changed. So it is not a new thing to change the name of a country. Okay, previously also it has been done. Then Rajasthan Special Healthcare Abhiyan Anchal launched for pregnant women. Okay, this Anchal program has been launched for has been launched for pregnant women. So basically it was a Karauli district. It was established in Karauli district for pregnant women and around 13,000 women got benefited from this program where health checkups were being uh, made uh, because of this. But uh, the point to remember here is Ankit Kumar Singh. He is the collector of that area, district collector. <coughs> It is the initiative of Ankit Kumar Singh because in exam they can ask you the question who was the person behind this Anchal uh, campaign launched in Rajasthan. So it was Ankit Kumar Singh. Okay. Then next. So basically if you want to follow for English Math, Reasoning, Current Affairs and Computer, you can join our Telegram channel where you can get PDFs, quiz, live classes link etc so it was a wonderful session with you guys and hope you are doing great so let's meet tomorrow with new current affairs and uh, thank you very much